What's up with the other guys? Brian here, the three topics came here to share with you another one of my game reviews to share with you guys today. And for this particular review, I'm sure you can tell from the video, I'll be giving you just my initial thoughts on uh, Gotham Knights. Now, I'm just going to state that because because I, I have a, a very little little bit of time and I'm trying to balance myself between playing three different games before a fourth one arrives later today, um, I didn't actually beat this completely. I did get, get through about two thirds of it and then I kind of looked at the cutscenes to see how the game ended. And I think that's enough for me to get an idea of where I would place this game. And right off the back, I have to say I'm sadly a little bit disappointed with Gotham Knights. Now, this was a game I was really looking forward to playing. Uh, just the concept of us having to play as other members of the Bat family and not have Batman around seemed like an interesting idea, especially when you were having them try to take on one of the most dangerous organizations in the form of the Court of Owls. So just that idea alone sounded like something that I was really looking forward to play. Now, having had a chance to play this for about 20 hours and seeing how the story plays out by the end, I can say that there's a number of elements that I think work just fine on their own and I think that this game will have its fans but unfortunately I think that when it comes to comparing this to say the Arkham franchise this is a bit of a step back. Now story wise I thought the story overall was, was just fine. Um, it starts off very at the very beginning with Batman being killed and he is genuinely killed. Like, I mean, I, I, I question whether they would actually go through with it, but yeah, very beginning, the first thing you see is Batman being killed, and it's actually quite believable. So now you have Dick Grayson as Nightwing, Jason Todd as Red Hood, Barbara Gordon as, as Batgirl, and I believe Tim Drake as Robin. They pretty much have to take over where Batman left off on his final case of trying to figure out what exactly this organization is that he discovered and trying to take it down. Now, I think that the team dynamic and how they plays out is very well handled. I think that each character is very much fully realized. They each have good chemistry between each other. They have good chemistry with uh, Alfred. I like their interactions with the, the villains that, that you encounter. Um, so I thought the story was just fine. It does get a little bit predictable. Um, if, if, you've, if you've read enough Batman, you can kind of see where certain things are going in certain directions. And by the time I saw how the game ended, it, it really didn't surprise me where it was going because it just seemed like, at the point where I got, it seemed like that was the direction that was, was coming up. And there weren't very few surprises. So I, I will say that while the story isn't great, I did think it was good for what it was going for. Now, where I think the game gets really disappointing, for, unfortunately, it's with its gameplay style. Um, I, at first, thought that this game would just be like an Arkham style game just with four different characters. Um, that is not how this game feels at all. I, I really did my best to kind of avoid looking at gameplay for this leading up to the launch of this game. And this game plays more like an old school style Assassin's Creed game than a Batman Arkham Asylum game. Um, combat is so slow. It's, it's, it's not even funny. I mean, it, there's, there's, there's a lack of smoothness. And you, and you focus on using just one button for attacking. Like, if you, you would tap it, you would do light ticks. And if you held it down, you would do a heavy attack. Um, I didn't like that. There's no counter button. You can kind of see where attacks are coming, but you, you're advised to just jump out of the way. You can use long-range projectile attacks, so it kind of goes in like a third-person shooter mode. Um, but that, that that's kind of that's pretty standard. Um, I thought the addition of trying to add RPG elements was I don't think it was the best choice. Now, trust me, I'm a big RPG fan. JRPGs are my favorite genre, but I don't necessarily think that adding RPG elements to any game will always work. And I and for this game, I don't think it really worked very well for me. Um, enemies have levels, so instead of being able to take them out quickly and decisively as you would like in the Arkham's, you actually have to kind of beat them down one at a time. Um, as your character levels up, they level up too. Um, there is a good variety of different enemies because there are different groups and gangs that have their own set of enemies that you have to encounter. So I did think that that was fine. Um, however, I think where the gameplay kind of suffers is with the pacing. Because there's two different sets of missions. There's like standard patrol missions and then there's story missions. Now, you have to take out a certain character. Now, you have to take your character of your choice out on patrols and then you have to go to certain gang members and then you have to interrogate specific members in order to gain access and information to access main story missions. 
So several times you'll have to do like one, two, sometimes three nights of standard patrolling before you can actually do a main story mission that progresses the story forward. And I didn't necessarily like this idea because I think that all this was done for two ways. I think it was either to make the game longer and it was also to force you to, uh, to, uh, love, to level up. Now, the thing about leveling up is I like the idea that you have multiple characters to play as. The problem is, is that it doesn't give you really an incentive to actually test out other characters. For my entire playthrough, I stuck with just Red Hood. And when I got to a point where I leveled up Red Hood to such a high level of like, I would say like 10 to 12, somewhere in between there, I thought like, is there really a reason to go through the game and, and start playing as Nightwing or Batgirl or Robin? There really isn't a reason because... In, Red Hood can handle every situation. I think that this game really would have benefited if it had had a system that for certain nights of patrolling, you can only use one character at a time. So like one night I play as Red Hood and then I go to the next night and I was like, you can't use Red Hood again. You have to play as someone else. So you pick someone else and then you go to like another night of patrolling and then like Red Hood becomes accessible again, but then you can't use the character you use the second night. I think that if they had done that, it would have balanced out the characters a little bit more. It would have made you feel more of a team because since I played the whole game as as, as, uh, as Red Hood, I didn't really feel that team dynamic. Now, I'm aware that there is a co-op element that allows you to play with someone as another character, but I didn't really get a chance to experience that, so I can only guess of how that would have worked. Um, another thing that I also wasn't too fan of is like, the RPG elements allow you to kind of upgrade your character and customize them a little bit, but I never really felt that the customization upgrades really like improved combat all that much. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, visually, I think that the changes are cool looking, but just in practice, it didn't really feel all that great. Uh, it, going around Gotham this time around was not very fun. Um, there are two ways to get around, or well, technically there's like three ways to get around. For, for like a good portion of the game, you'll be spending it either using the bat bike to kind of drive from location to locations, it's not until like a good amount into the game where they, they even consider adding fast passes, like, you know, fast passes so, so you can actually get around much faster. So that made the game feel longer than I felt it needed to be. Um, you don't get the ability to kind of like glide and move around the city fast until like much, much later in the game. And from so from that point on, you'll just be jumping from rooftop to rooftop using your grappling hook. And that just made things just feel so so. It was it was really it really was not fun exploring. I would say like out of all of the games that are like open world sandbox that have these sandbox exploration elements, this is perhaps the least amount of fun I've ever had exploring during air any advi any environment. Uh, another thing I also really didn't care much for was the level of difficulty. Uh, this game was not difficult. I mean, I don't know if it was due to like picking a certain level of difficulty, but enemies, even if they, if you can play this game on the hard difficulty, the enemies really are pretty straightforward. They don't really, they, they don't coordinate their attacks to make things harder. And that's something that the Arkham games don't, were able to do very, very simply. Uh, another thing I also didn't like was just the, the lack of the really cool, diverse missions. I mean, it, they tried to take some inspiration from the Arkham games, but just with how the gameplay is, it just can't execute them as well. And I think maybe that may have been an issue uh, from, from, from on my part. Perhaps I should have tried to see this game as its own and not compare them to Arkham, but it's just so hard because it, they look so alike, yet there's just so many things that are different. Um, and I also have to say that just just mechanically, this, this game had a bunch of glitches. There were so many glitches. I mean, just environment. There were problems with enemy AI. There were some times where uh, this game had a couple crashes. So um, I think that there are several patches that this game needs in order to actually get to a state where it's actually a, you know just a good, a smooth, flowing experience. Uh, and visually, this game does not look very good. I mean, I compared this to how Arkham Knight looked, and wow, this was a serious downgrade. I mean, I don't know how you did that, but like... Yeah, Arkham Knight on the PlayStation 4 looks better than Gotham Knight on the PlayStation 5. So, yeah, just overall, this was probably a very disappointing experience. Now, again, I do think that this game does have its fans, and it will appeal to uh, some people. But for me, this really wasn't the best experience, and I ended up being a bit disappointed at the end of my playthrough. Now, I'll probably play through the last third of the game just to 
you know, get, get a few more trophies. But yeah, I, this is certainly not something that I would personally want to add to my personal collection. And if you are expecting like an Arkham style of experience, then you're not really going to find it here. And it's, it, I, I find that disappointing. So if I unfortunately had to give Gotham Knights a rating, you know, I think that the highest I could give this, just to be fair, is like a four, maybe even a five. I think five out of ten is the best I can do. Um, I would not recommend getting this on at full price. I mean, if you really want to get this game, I would wait a few months and get this at a sales price and then wait for some more patches to kind of fix those glitches. Because trust me, th there's just so many technical problems that just hold this game back. And I think that once you smoothen those out... Um, I think you'll at least have like a, a, a decent experience. But again, this is just from my experience. So that is my review of Gotham Knights. If you happen to enjoy this review at the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Keep tracking me on my future videos. And if you played this game or you had a better experience, tell me some things about this game that you liked. So without that, so with everything said, um, that's my review. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, heck, uh, I'll catch you next time.